Hello viewers, uh, in this session uh, we are going to uh, look at some examples uh, concerning Taylor's theorem and uh, then uh, we will analyze uh, the properties of zeros of an analytic function that is the points where an analytic function is 0. Okay. And we will see some theorems uh, concerning uh, the zeros of analytic function. Okay. So, firstly uh, some examples uh, uh, for uh, Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, uh, the first example is determining the power series uh, of, uh, of a function. Okay. So, uh, to determine um, okay, the power series of uh, f of z equals uh, z power 6 uh, sin 3 z. Okay, so, what we can do is we can actually use Taylor's theorem and uh, say that the power series of this function f of z uh, will equal uh, you know whatever the Taylor's theorem says this the coefficient c n uh, are given by the nth derivative of this function divided by n factorial etcetera. But to compute the derivatives of this function uh, is tedious. Okay. So, instead what we will do is we will uh, compute the Taylor series for this function sin 3 z okay, and then multiply by z power 6 that is easier than directly computing the Taylor series for f of z. Okay. So, we know by one way or the other that the Taylor series for sin 3 z well by using its derivatives let us say the, the Taylor series okay, so the Taylor's series for sin 3 z is sin 3 z equals uh, sigma n equals 0 through infinity of minus 1 power n 3 z raised to 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 n plus 1 factorial. Okay. So, the Taylor series of uh, sin 3 z, z being a complex number tallies with the Taylor series uh, in the real real case for sin 3 x, okay, where x is a real, num a real number. Okay. Uh, so, uh, x replaced with a complex number z here works okay. and the radius of convergence of this series is uh, infinity. So, what this means is that for any for any z belongs to uh, c. Okay. So, sin 3 z is this. So, we can uh, say that f of z the Taylor series for f of z is nothing but uh, z power 6 multiplied by uh, this Taylor series n equals 0 through infinity minus 1 power n 3 z power 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 n plus 1 factorial okay. and then uh, and then take the z power 6 inside and multiply. You can do that because you have a convergent power series and z power 6 um, is anyway an analytic function. Uh, so, this is n equals 0 through infinity minus 1 power n. Okay. So, this is 3 power 2 n plus 1 times z power uh, 2 n plus 7 divided by 2 n plus 1 factorial okay, for any z belongs to c. Okay. So, this is much easier than actually uh, finding the derivatives of f and then uh, figuring out its Taylor series. Okay. So, this is a this is a practical note okay, as opposed to using the Taylor's theorem directly. Okay. So, now um, the next example is that of uh, the logarithm a branch of a logarithm. Okay. So, here is the example. So, uh, consider the, uh, the set complex plane minus uh, the segment minus infinity is 0. Okay. So, uh, you know this is not really I mean this notation is kind of sloppy, but you understand what this is. Uh, this is the complex plane minus the uh, the negative real axis including the point uh, 0. Okay. So, you have removed the 
negative uh, real axis along with the point 0. Okay. So, you consider this set. So, that is a branch cut and you can define a logarithm on this as we know from uh, before. Okay. So, f of z define f on uh, c minus minus infinity comma 0 as f of z is equal to log modulus of z plus i theta, where you constrain theta to be between uh, minus pi and pi okay. and theta here is the argument. Okay. So, so, I should say theta belongs to log mod z plus i theta uh, and theta and theta is belongs to the argument the set argument of z. Okay. Recall argument of a complex number is a set okay. and the entries are, uh, uh, okay, uh, are at 2 pi apart from each other. Okay. So, if you constrain theta to be in this region uh, minus pi to pi, then you have a function here f of z equals uh, log mod z uh, plus i theta. Okay. So, this is this as we know is a, a branch of logarithm. Okay. So, uh, f is analytic on c minus minus infinity comma 0 as we know from before. Okay. So, uh, f must have a Taylor series expansion locally locally at every point in c minus minus infinity comma 0 okay that's taylor's theorem so in particular let us pick a point here so on this complex plane on this picture let us pick a point let's say 1 1 on the real line okay so now um, we can expect this uh, the Taylor series for uh, this branch of logarithm to have a Taylor uh, series expansion uh, in a disk about 1. Well, how far can the disk stretch really? Well, that disk can actually stretch until we hit a point where the function is uh, no longer analytic. So, we can expect this disk to have radius 1. Okay? So, this disk will have radius 1 and it is centered at 1. Okay. So, it is an open disk remember. So, uh, we can expand, uh, we can hope to have, we can hope to have uh, uh, Taylor's, okay, Taylor's expansion for this, for f, I will say f, that branch of logarithm, okay, for f uh, around around the point 1 okay, around 1 uh, with radius of convergence. One. Okay, and let us try to get the Taylor series expansion. Well, instead of finding the derivatives etcetera directly once again we will resort to indirect methods. Okay. So, first we know that uh, we know that 1 by z Okay, the function 1 by z can be written as 1 by 1 plus z minus 1 okay. and in this disk itself in this disk con under consideration or uh, the, the disk of our guess this is equal to uh, sigma n equals 0 through infinity of minus 1 power n uh, modulus or sorry uh, z minus 1 raised to n. Okay. Uh, so, this this function has this series expansion power series expansion it is a geometric series as long as the modulus of z minus 1 this quantity is strictly less than 1. Okay. This is i e in in uh, b 1 1 okay. z i e z in uh, b 1 1. Okay. So, uh, we will actually use the fact that 
um, this function 1 by z uh, is the derivative of log z uh, on um, on c minus on, on the domain given here c minus minus infinity 0. Okay. So, d by d z since log z is analytic okay, and uh, its differentiation is 1 by z on the uh, disk of interest at least actually it is uh, its derivative equal, equals 1 by z uh, on all of its domain. Okay. So, uh, this is equal to this is equal to sigma n equals 0 through infinity minus 1 power n z minus 1 power n uh, for uh, z belongs to b 1 1. Okay. So, uh, we also know that the power series if log z has a power series if log z is equal to sigma uh, c n uh, z minus 1 power n n equals 0 through infinity for z belongs to b 1 1. Okay. Then we know that d by d z of log z. Okay. We saw that power series are analytic and their differentiation is given by differentiating it term wise. So, this is n equals 1 through infinity of n c n z minus 1 power n minus 1 for the same uh, z okay, for z in b 1 1. Okay. What this means is that um, of, you know by comparison of this and this what we get is that um, uh, n. Okay. So, I guess uh, by shifting index, okay, what we get is n c n, okay, uh, is equal to, uh, okay, uh, n c n is equal to minus one power n minus one, okay, and uh, not only that, uh, okay, this is true for n greater than or equal to one, okay, and f of uh, one is zero, okay. Okay, log 1 is 0. So, c 0 is 0. Okay. So, so, f of z is equal to uh, sigma n equals 1 through uh, infinity of minus 1 power n minus 1 divided by n because c n is now from here c n is minus 1 power n minus 1 divided by n okay, times z minus 1 raised to n for z belongs to b 1 1. Okay. So, uh, that is the, uh, the power series for this branch of logarithm. Okay. Once again a little indirect way we use the uh, power series expansion of the derivative of this branch of logarithm to, uh, to obtain the power series for the logarithm. So, uh, another uh, sort of remark really on, uh, on Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, the function uh, when we uh, when we see the following function and it is Taylor's expansion in the uh, real case i e uh, the function 1 by 1 plus x squared as a function of real numbers. We see that its expansion is 1 minus x squared plus x power 4 etcetera. Okay. So, um, uh, and then the radius of convergence happens to be uh, 1. Okay. It is not immediately clear why uh, this function 1 by 1 plus x squared should have a radius of convergence 1 when it comes to Taylor's series. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, in, the, in the real setting in the real number setting, but when we ascend to the complex number setting we see that 1 by 1 plus z squared is 1 minus z squared plus z power 4 etcetera okay, with mod z less than 1 and we sort of see why this uh, 1 acts as a barrier for this power series uh, around 0. Okay. So, uh, what I mean by that is around 0 you notice that 1 by 1 plus z squared is analytic on uh, b 0 1, okay, but is undefined at plus or minus i. Okay, uh, the numerator, the denominator actually becomes zero. So i and minus i here actually act as a barrier for the expansion of power series around zero. Okay, so this series really doesn't doesn't extend uh, beyond this disk of radius one. 
So, that is a geometric explanation of uh, of why the, 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 the radius of convergence of power series 1 by 1 plus z of 1 by 1 plus z square um, around 0 sort of has a radius of convergence 1 and uh, you know does not go beyond. Okay. So, this i and minus i which are not points of analyticity of 1 by 1 plus z square act as barriers. Okay. So, a similar phenomenon we saw uh, happens in the case of this branch of logarithm. So, uh, beyond uh, uh, beyond this uh, radius 1 okay, we have points here, okay. we have points here uh, which are not points of analyticity of this function of this branch of logarithm. Okay. So, likewise if we uh, going back to this example if we take let us say 10 on the real line okay, or any complex number c for that matter. Okay. So, let us pick this example of 10 uh, on the real line then we can expect to have a, a power series expansion for this uh, function this, this uh, branch of logarithm uh, of uh, for with radius of convergence 10. Okay. So, uh, that sort of uh, uh, solves the uh, quote unquote mystery of uh, why these power series have uh, a certain radius of convergence and uh, why that power series cannot be extended forever uh, uh, beyond a point. Okay. So, these functions uh, when they have uh, certain barriers that, that or points where they are not analytic. Uh, their power series expansion around certain points cannot be extended. Okay. So, uh, that also we can note uh, from uh, Taylor's theorem okay, and power series in the complex plane. All right. So, next uh, what we will do is uh, we will use Taylor's theorem to study the zeros of uh, a complex analytic function. Okay. So, this is zeros of analytic function okay, of an analytic function. Okay. Firstly, some notation um, uh, a 0 of a function f like we know okay, of a function f is a point a where okay, uh, f of a is equal to 0 that we call is a 0 of a function. Okay. So, uh, let uh, define z of f we will use this notation z of f uh, we will use this notation following uh, the textbook uh, of a uh, priestly okay uh, z of f is equal to z belongs to g such that f of z is equal to 0 okay it's the set of all zeros of the function f okay so um, taylor's theorem actually gives us some important conclusions about the zeros okay and uh, we will see that so uh, suppose f is analytic on a certain B A R okay, a ball of radius r around A okay, r strictly positive okay, uh, and suppose that f of A is equal to 0. Okay. Uh, then Taylor's theorem tells us that Firstly, since f is analytic in the ball of radius r around a, okay, f has a, a power series expansion about a okay, um, with, with certain radius of convergence. Okay. So, c n z minus a power n um, n equals 0 through infinity at least the radius of convergence is r or is at least r. Okay. So, for modulus of z minus a strictly less than r, okay. where we also know that uh, c n is 1 by n factorial um, the nth derivative of f at a. 
Okay. We also know that since f is 0 at a, c 0 is uh, 0, okay. since f of a is 0, okay. f of a is c 0. So, now there are two cases, case 1, if all the derivatives of f at a are 0. Okay. So, if all the derivatives of f at a are 0, okay, then, uh, then Taylor's theorem tells us that uh, then f is identically the 0 function, identically the 0 function on B A R. Notice this is uh, far from true uh, for functions of uh, real numbers. There are functions whose derivatives are all 0, uh, but, um, okay, uh, but then the function itself is non-zero. Okay. So, uh, since, since uh, analytic functions have local power series expansions, so since they are equal to a certain power series uh, and the coefficients of this power series are nothing but the derivatives of f, if f is 0 at a point then uh, and if all its derivatives are 0, then the function should be identically 0 on that disk of radius r. Okay, so, that happens for complex analytic functions. So, that is a that is a very important conclusion from uh, Taylor's theorem okay, um, about the zeros of a, a, of a function okay. and then uh, case 2 suppose that is not true. Okay. So, if all the derivatives of f at a are I mean if not all of them are 0, then there is a smallest positive integer uh, such that m such that the mth derivative of f at a is non zero okay so um, if if uh, if not okay if case 1 is not true uh, let m be the smallest positive integer okay such that uh, f m okay, uh, the mth derivative of f at a is non zero okay. correspondingly that particular c m in uh, you know in the Taylor series expansion uh, will be non zero okay. then what we can say is that f of z by definition m is the smallest positive integer so f of z looks like z minus a power m uh, sigma n equals m through infinity of uh, c n now z minus a raised to n minus m. Okay. What I am doing is uh, the, the expansion for f now starts at n equals m okay, because um, c, c n s are all 0 for n less than m. Okay. So, I will start the expansion from n equals m and when I start the expansion from n equals m, I know that I can factor out z minus a raised to m okay? and I do that and when I factor out a z minus a raised to m, what I get is uh, this, this form. Okay? So, this particular form, okay? so this form and um, now also I should immediately note that this is true for modulus for, for z belongs to B A R. Okay, did I use R? I guess I used R. Yeah. Okay. So um, now, what is also important is that with this is true with CM. Okay, with the first term CM not equal to zero. Okay. So uh, so that is the Taylor series expansion. Okay. Then F in this case. In case two, okay, in this case, uh, is said to have a zero of order m at a. Okay, so um, 
the 0 is called a simple 0. Okay. If so, this is 0 of order m okay, at a and then the 0 is called a simple 0 if uh, m is equal to 1, okay, which means uh, the factoring out occurs uh, for I mean a, m equals 1 that is the smallest integer uh, for which the c n is uh, non 0. Okay. So, you, you see that uh, from this thing circled in red you see that um, f of z sort of behaves like a polynomial. We know that uh, uh, polynomials uh, if they have a 0 at a point you can factor out uh, that particular z minus a raised to a certain power m where m is the order of 0 of that polynomial okay. and then whatever uh, is the remaining factor uh, that is non 0 at that point uh, a. Okay, you can factor out a polynomial that way. Okay. So, likewise you can factor out uh, an analytic function locally okay, in that fashion. Uh, so, in that sense the analytic functions behave locally like polynomials okay, in that sense and um, then what I want to say here is I want to take an example. Here is an example uh, sin z Okay, is equal to 0 we know for z equals k pi and only for these values of z. Okay. And we also know that the differentiation of sin z is cosine z okay, which is not equal to 0 at z equals k pi. Okay. So, we already see that uh, the first derivative of uh, the analytic function sin z is non zero uh, at the zeros of the analytic function okay so here uh, so all the sim so all the zeros of sin z are simple because m in this case okay m in this case is just one the first derivative is non zero okay so um, so that happens for uh, sin z okay so, that is an example of an analytic function which has simple zeros okay. and it is likewise relatively easy to construct examples of analytic functions uh, which have uh, double zeros or triple zeros. What I mean by that is they have zeros of order 2, 3 etcetera. Okay. So, uh, you just take z squared sin z or uh, you know uh, z sin z has a 0 of order 2 at uh, has a 0 of order 2 at 0 okay, z has a 0 of order 2 at, uh, at z equals 0. Okay. So, um, I will I will actually uh, state the following here is a, a fact okay, which you can prove easily or uh, by just using what we have done using Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, if f and g are analytic on uh, B A R and uh, f of A is equal to g of A is equal to 0. Okay. And if n f is the order of 0 of f at A and n g is the order of 0 of g at a, okay. then the 0 of f times g okay, at a has firstly note that f times g will be 0 at a, because f and g are both 0 at a. Okay. So, the 0 of f times g uh, at a has order n f plus n g simply uh, it is the addition of order. Okay. So, because of this fact which can easily be uh, okay, obtained from this form of expansion okay, and, and multiplication of power series. Okay. You can uh, multiply 
power series in a certain fashion okay and then uh, you can you can immediately conclude uh, this fact all right. So, um, from there I can uh, say that z sin z has a 0 of order 2 at z equals 0 okay. or for that matter now I can construct a function having uh, you know, uh, 0 of a certain order at a point. Okay. All right. So, uh, that is okay, that is a fact there okay. and now uh, I want to further analyze this thing that I have circled in red. Okay. What I want to uh, conclude further is that I will define, okay, so let f of z, okay, so let f have a let f of z equal, okay, so uh, from above, from above that is easier, from above the same setup f of z equal uh, z minus a power m sigma n equals m through infinity of c n z minus a raised to n minus m okay, for z belongs to b a r r positive okay, where c m the first term is non zero. Okay. So, now what I will do is define I will take this part which is non zero okay, define phi of z is e as p of z uh, is equal to sigma n equals m through infinity of c n z minus a raised to n minus m. Okay. So, first uh, as noted above I can conclude that phi of a is non zero right because c m is non zero. Okay. So, phi of a which is c m is non zero. And also note that uh, phi is a power series. Okay, so define this for z belongs to B A R. Okay, on the very same set. Okay, so since phi is a power series function, we saw that power series are analytic. Okay, since uh, since phi is a power series, in fact, convergent power series. Okay, uh, on Okay, is a convergent power series on uh, B A R. Okay, uh, phi is analytic by what we already know. Okay, and hence continuous, at least continuous. So that gives us an important conclusion that if phi of A is non-zero. Okay, so uh, so, there is an epsilon positive okay. phi of a is non zero means that phi of z is non zero for a certain z in a neighborhood around a. Okay. So, that is a property of a continuous function. So, there is an epsilon positive such that uh, phi of z is non zero for z belongs to uh, b a epsilon. So, there is a whole neighborhood around A where phi is non zero. Okay. Now, this immediately tells us that f has a 0. So, let us go back to this, this uh, form. Okay. Once again, this form here was in red. Okay. So, f has a 0 uh, of order m at A okay. and whatever is remaining okay, uh, this, this, this is non zero at any point around A. Okay, this this function is definitely non-zero around A, and we just concluded by continuity of this power series that this is also non-zero uh, around A, okay, around a neighborhood of uh, around this or in a neighborhood of A. Okay, so what that gives is the us is that the the zeros of f are actually isolated. Okay, what I mean by that is there is a small neighborhood around the zero such that f is non-zero in that neighborhood. Okay. So, um, what we conclude is that, so we can conclude, we conclude that the zeros of f are isolated in this case. Okay. What is this case? This is case 2 we are dealing with, okay. this is case 2. 
Okay. So, we will sum this up in the following uh, uh, theorem. Okay. So, this we will call as identity theorem after the textbook. Okay. So, suppose that f is analytic on B A R R positive okay, uh, R positive and that f of A is equal to 0. Okay. Then either either of the two happens okay. case 1 f is identically 0 okay, in B A R or 2 that is this is the case 2 we are uh, working with okay, 2 uh, and right below 2 uh, the 0 of f Uh, at A is isolated, okay. that is there is a there is an epsilon positive such that uh, the punctured disc B prime of A epsilon. Recall what that is. That is B A epsilon minus the point A itself. Okay. So uh, B A epsilon, B prime A epsilon has no other zero of f. Okay. So um, as a consequence of this, what we can conclude is that uh, consequently if A is a limit point of Z of F, then F is identically 0 in B A R. So, I will uh, briefly provide a proof of this uh, consequence. What this says is that um, well, if if A is a limit point of Z of F, okay. Uh, so what that means is that every every uh, epsilon neighborhood, okay. So every uh, B A one by n, let's say, okay, contains a zero of F, okay, an element of Z of F. Okay, so uh, so two can't happen. Two cannot happen, which implies one has to happen. Okay, so which means f is identically zero uh, there. Okay, so next uh, we will try to. Uh, extend this theorem this identity theorem for beyond a disk okay so obviously this is not true uh, for the whole uh, domain of analyticity well uh, if the domain is disconnected or i mean if, if the region of analyticity of f is disconnected because f could be uh, constant one constant on one component and another constant on another component and so um, you could have uh, you could have f not identically zero but then uh, you know all the derivatives of f are zero okay so here is actually a good extension of this theorem so identity theorem this is called the identity theorem uh, general form it states the following so let g be a region so, recall a region is uh, open connected set. 
So, we the connectivity of G is uh, essential here for this theorem. Okay. So, the proof as we can guess uh, is uh, topological hence. Okay. So, let G be a region and suppose that uh, F is analytic on G. Okay. So, assume that uh, the set the set z of f i e the zeros of f okay, um, of the zeros of f has a limit point. So, there exists a limit point in G okay, then f is identically 0. in G. Okay. So, if there is a limit point for the uh, 0 set of f uh, in the uh, region G, okay, then f has to be identically 0. So, the proof is as follows. Okay. So, first let, let E be the set of limit points. of the set z of f z of f okay so e is the limit point set of the set of zeros of f okay e is non empty is given okay it the we assume that the set z of f has a limit point which means e is non empty okay so that is given to us so first we will note that uh, first we will note that e is contained in z of f okay so first let uh, a belong to E. We will show that A is in Z of F. Okay. Then for each n belongs to n, okay, there is an A n belongs to ball of radius 1 by n around A okay, uh, with, with uh, a n belongs to z of f. Okay. So, this sequence a n uh, uh, since limit n goes to infinity of a n is equal to a okay, uh, by continuity of f. So, we I mean uh, here is a note. Uh, the limit definition of continuity uh, is in order here. Okay. So, um, please note that if there is a uh, there is a sequence converging to a point and if a function is continuous uh, at the point, okay, then the limit as uh, the limit of the functional values on the sequence has to converge to the value of the function at that point as long as the function is defined etcetera etcetera at that point and in a neighborhood of that point. Okay. So, uh, if the function is continuous of course, it will be defined. Okay. So, all that is true. So, that is the uh, sequential definition of continuity. So, by continuity of f the limit as n goes to infinity of f of a n is equal to f of a. Okay. But uh, we know that f of a n is 0 because a n belongs to z of f. So, this is a constant sequence 0 on the left hand side this implies that f of a is actually equal to 0. Okay. So, this implies that a belongs to the set z of f. So, if we start with a point in the limit point set of the set of zeros, then that point itself is contained in uh, the set of zeros. So, e is contained in z of f that is the first note. Okay. So, then uh, what I am going to show is that this set e is both open and closed in the, 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 uh, the region G. Okay. What that will show is that is both open and closed uh, and uh, if G is connected there is only uh, there are only two sets which are both open and closed in G namely the empty set and the set G, uh, but of course, E is non empty which will give us that E is the whole set G. Okay. The, so, so, the set of limit points of 
uh, this uh, zeros of f is the whole set g which will mean that uh, f is 0 identically on g. Okay? So, that is the strategy. So, E first I will show is open. Okay? If A belongs to E, I will show that there is a neighborhood of A uh, which is contained in E. Okay? Then by what we have just done okay, by above uh, f of A is 0, because E is contained in z of f. Okay? Also by previous theorem, Okay, uh, there is an epsilon positive, okay, such that um, f of z is identically zero on B A epsilon. Noting this consequence, consequently, if A is a limit point of z of f, then f is identically zero in B A R. Okay. So, we are using that. So, um, since A is in E, we should have by the previous theorem that f of z is identically 0 on um, B A epsilon. Okay. So, uh, now since we know something about B A epsilon, epsilon positive. Okay. Now, since every point of B A epsilon is a limit point uh, of z of f. Uh, e contains uh, B A epsilon. Okay. So, um, f is identically 0 and uh, this set is an open set so, uh, identically 0 on this open set and since every point of that open set is a limit point uh, of z of f, E contains B A epsilon. So, E is open. Likewise, we can show that E is closed. What is the argument for E is closed? Uh, if A belongs to the set G minus E, okay, then Uh, we will do this in two cases. Case 1, if, if f of a is non-zero, okay, then by continuity of a of f rather, okay, uh, there is an R 1 positive such that f of a f of z is non-zero for uh, z belongs to B a r 1. Okay. And so, this implies uh, B A r 1 okay, is not in the 0 set of f. So, it cannot be in the uh, set E. So, B A r 1 is contained in G minus E. Okay. Second, if f of uh, A is equal to 0, okay, then, uh, then by previous theorem, since A is not the limit point, okay, A does not belong to E. Okay. So, A is not the limit point, okay. uh, there, is, there is an epsilon positive such that uh, B prime, okay, f of z is not equal to 0 for, uh, for z in B prime of A epsilon that is by the previous theorem once again. Okay. So, this tells us that this implies uh, B prime A epsilon is disjoint from the 0 set and A is not in E. So, this implies B A uh, epsilon is contained in G minus E. So, in either case there is a neighborhood around A which is contained in G minus E if A is not in E. Okay. So, this implies E is closed. Okay. So, E is both closed, both uh, closed and open in G and E is non empty. So, from previous uh, topological considerations we know that, uh, so E has to be equal to G since G is connected. 
i e the limit point set is the whole set g i e uh, f is identically 0 on g. Okay, so, that is the uh, proof of this theorem. Okay. So, we will uh, continue with this in the next session.